Ajmualanian here um, with Caleb and Eric of Tra uh, the Walter Schrader swim team, YMCA. Right. And today we're going to talk about dry land training for swimming and how that it can enhance sports performance for that group. Eric? Well, uh, swim is a sport when most people start when they're a little younger and they see a lot of success just by being in the pool and that's what comes with it. Get faster when you're younger. It's just because you're adapting to water, you're growing so much. But as soon as you get that puberty, you know that stage where you start to gain weight, start to gain muscle. If you're not doing anything outside the water, you're not preparing yourself to swim top quality sports. Uh, muscle strength inside the water it can get better. You know, obviously there is resistance. It's up to 800 times thicker than air, or whatever it is. But we need that that agility, that speed, that land. Uh, based exercises to overcome the resistance of the water. So anything outside, anything done, say whether it be physical therapy or strength training or agility training or plyometrics, that is key for being a top-notch swimmer in and out of the water. You bet. Caleb? I think the biggest thing is that uh, we want swimmers who are athletes, not just swimmers. Too many times we see swimmers who are athletes, but we want athletes who are swimmers. You see the top level teams around the world, college, club, the stronger you are, the faster you are. And we also want to keep that range motion, good flexibility, all that fun stuff. So really it's just how strong we get stronger, keeping that range motion, you'll see it in the water. Swimming is a pr primarily concentric sport. We want to make sure that we can load eccentrically and isometric isometrically as well. And that's a big thing that dryland training does. That's awesome. Um... So you you know we did a workout, did some plyometric training. How do you think that transfers into swimming? Um, from what we did today, just sheer explosiveness. And when it comes across the board to sprinting or distance, each part of the race is going to have its explosive nature. So even though 50 freestyle is that the whole way, a 400 freestyle, the last 50 you're going to be pushing that 100. percent And for what we're trying to do, we're not trying to be the best at going eight 200s in a row. We're trying to have the best 200 for one time. And so trying to lengthen that out and doing like 70 to 80% of your max load each time is not helping us. Because we're not trying to be the best at a training, even though we are. We're trying to be the best at that one individual swim that we have that is you know, making its full max all out rather than, you know, like I said, eight 200s. So maximum velocity exactly. is critical. And if you're not at 80 to if you're not above 80 percent you're really not training Nothing. speed absolutely yeah. caleb i think he nailed it right on the head uh, i think that uh, something that's very overlooked in our sport is that we have a lot of races that are over two minutes in length especially long course so people neglect the explosiveness so like oh we just have to train we just have to stay aerobically fit and it's like no it's like no matter what race you're in you're gonna have to be explosive at some point kind of like eric said you're gonna have to be explosive off the start off the turns into the finish you're not just, you're, aerobically fitness can only get you so far. You have to be explosive too. And that's something that we really neglect as a sport, but the top elite athletes in our sport do not neglect it. And you can see it. That's why they're the elites. Absolutely. Well, gentlemen, um, thank you again for the opportunity to work with you and the athletes. Thank uh, you, man. Win your day and we'll talk to around. you soon. You bet.